I'm Lee McDermott, originally from Scotland. Um, when I was 10, or I trained with the Scottish Ballet Company, I was a dancer originally. Um, I loved the discipline, I loved the structure. I really enjoyed my training there. So much so that the um, BBC done a documentary on me when I was a kid. And I came from a working class background. Um, you know, my dad was a welder, my mother um, was a stay-at-home mom. All the other kids in class came from um, much higher uh, families, you know, in terms of lawyers, doctors, all that sort of thing. So they were interested to see, you know, what my story was. It aired on a Sunday night. Monday morning I walked into school and uh, completely got my ass handed to me. You know, kids can be so cruel at that age. It was rough. I didn't know how to fight, didn't know how to take care of myself. I was scared. Um, and it didn't stop. You know, the kids just kept finding all sorts of different ways to make my life completely miserable. On my way to dance class one day, I saw this poster for a martial arts class. I went up the stairs, found out where the place was, and I almost didn't go in. Um, I wasn't even tall enough to look over the window, um, but I pulled my fingers up and peeked over, and there was all these guys, black belts, red belts, all these guys, you know, just kicking the crap out of each other. You know, these guys were really good, and, you know, I was terrified. I, I didn't know how to fight and like violence, but I knew I had to, you know, and I was there on my own. I went myself to check it out. And uh, fortunately, the instructor's girlfriend at the time saw me and brought me in. And um, I tried my first class, and I, I didn't like it. It was, <laughs> it was tough. You know, it was like I had skills, I had coordination, I had timing from the dance training. But this was different. This was this was guys kicking and punching me and stuff that I just didn't like. But. I stuck with it because, you know, my dad told me, you know, my dad's ex-military, you know, parachute regiment, um, very tough individual, very strong-minded individual, and he told me because I'd went to do the dance stuff first. He's like, all right, Lee, you'll we'll switch disciplines, but you either give me a black belt or I'll give you a black eye. He didn't mean it literally, but that was his way of, you know, making me a man up as such. There came a point in time where a couple of years later, I actually did um, take care of some things at school um, and the building stopped when I did what I had to do and made my stamp on certain bullies and certain individuals I felt like you know I don't have to train anymore because I'd solved that particular problem but then I found that I didn't want to stop training I, at that point I actually loved what I was doing I didn't want to give it up because it empowered me it made me feel safe to walk around it made me feel just more secure you know, it gave me something that, that I hadn't had before and it wasn't until I'd solved that first problem that I realised that this was something that I had to keep doing. And eventually at 15, I started coaching. My instructor at the time had me start assistant coaching and then I started coaching classes on my own. And at that point, something else clicked inside me, the, the ability to help others. Because being bullied in any way, shape or form is probably one of the worst things a human can experience. And to help somebody overcome that fear the way my instructor had helped me overcome that fear, the way my dad had helped me overcome that fear, the way my mum had helped me overcome that fear just by being supportive. You can't put a price on that. You know, there's nothing worse than a kid lying in bed at night, terrified to go to school. You can't concentrate in class, you're in math class, you can't concentrate because you need to get to English class, but you're worried in case you can get there without getting beat up. You know, and these were the sort of things that I was facing, but also other kids were facing. If you weren't in with the cool kids, if you weren't in with the guys that were hanging out, stealing, smoking, and doing all the other stuff that they were doing back then, then you were a victim. And once I'd found that I'd solved that for myself, and I had the ability to help other people do the same thing, I threw myself 100% into coaching and teaching. My instructors brought me in a sandal to, to Scotland. I think it was 1984. First time I saw Kali, first time I saw, you know, the guy that taught Bruce Lee weapons. And it was absolutely enchanting is the best way to put it. The skill level, the, the technique, the, the timing, the, the, the precision, it reminded me of the precision that my old dance instructors used to instill upon me. It just struck a chord. I just plunged wholeheartedly into training. By the time I was 19, I had three schools. But my whole dream had been to come to Los Angeles to, to train with Guru Dan at his academy. It took me till I was about 22 to make that happen. And it was incredible. Just 
there's lots of training, lots of knowledge, lots of inspiration. When I first came out here permanently, it was a challenge, you know, because I was, you know, fresh off the boat, as they say. I eventually got a job. And PetSmart was my first sort of official job once I got things situated. And uh, whew, that was a transition. Uh, I actually got my start in the movie industry through working at PetSmart, which may seem bizarre, but what happened was is I was doing an audit one day, came across a customer that I tried to help. Her husband was a stunt coordinator on Master and Commander. A wonderful, wonderful man called Dan Barringer, who I owe a lot to. You know, he got my start in the business. And simply through meeting his wife and meeting him, he got me an audition. Through my Kali training and my martial arts training, I, I got hired on Master and Commander um, that starred Russell Crowe. I identified with the work. I loved the work ethic of the, the stunt guys. I loved the, the, the camaraderie, the teamwork. And, and what happened was is that I really felt that I'd found something that I could be really good at. You know, I genuinely believed, hey, I can do this. The reality of that sort of struck home. It's very difficult, it's a long road, it's tough. Um, you, you've got to really have some grit, have some, some gumption to, to stay on that road because there's way more disappointments than there are good things. And then um, I had kids, you know, I had kids. I have two wonderful sons, Aiden who's 12, and uh, Kieran who is 10. Becoming a father was the, the most amazing thing in my entire life. I remember Aiden being born. We took him upstairs to give him his first bath. I know this might sound weird, but I was, I was bathing him and he opened his eyes. Now I know scientifically, you know, he doesn't see yet, but for me, he looks straight in my soul. You know, my son looked at me and it changed me forever. That just made me... It made me a dad, you know, it made me a father. It changed my priorities from, you know, following my dreams and what I wanted to do to, hey, I've got this, I've got this son, I've got this human that's, that's mine. But obviously, being a dad, responsibilities change. I kind of transitioned away from the sort of film movie industry because it was so tough and it was so difficult and I went back to, you know, working, you know, day jobs of coaching and teaching. You know, and then my second son was born, Kieran. And when he was born, he was born with a major um, congenital heart defect and that was devastating because we weren't even sure if he was going to survive. To face the prospect of losing your child, uh, scares you, it's terrifying. Fortunately, that's not what happened. He he was born, he didn't crash the way he thought he was going to. But the reason he didn't crash is because his heart problem was a lot more complicated than, than what they originally thought. His heart was essentially inside out and backwards. If you can imagine a V8 engine all mixed up, it's still working for some reason, but it, it, it shouldn't. You know, he had holes in his heart, he had valves wrong, he had things backwards. It was so complicated that the surgeons from Europe were flying in to watch the surgery um, because his condition was so rare. That didn't make me feel any better, <laughs> you know, to be honest. And again, they gave us the same speech, look, you know, we don't know how it's gonna go, we'll do our best, but we can't promise anything. And I remember taking my son and handing him over, they gave him the medicine to make him drowsy, it wasn't working. And I remember handing him over to the physician's, <coughs> the physician's assistant to take him, and he was crying, he was reaching for me, he was crying, he was crying. And they took him through the doors, and the door shut, and I thought it was the I wasn't sure if I was going to see him alive. It's not something a father wants to go through. Um, 13 hours later, um, Dr. Hanley came out and said that everything went great. And um, he's 10 and he's awesome. You know, it's. Um, It's a miracle he's here and my life's better for it. They're both my sons, you know, they, they're my life and, you know, um, I drew strength from them to do what I had to do to be their dad. Um, even when it was tough, because it wasn't about me anymore, it was about, it was about them. But once Kieran was, was healthy, I started to refocus back on my, my film career because I really wanted to rekindle that. 
sometimes I thought to myself, and lots of people thought, you know, dude, what are you doing? Are you crazy? You know, get a real job, you know. And I really believed that with who I am and what I could do, that the film industry and teaching people martial arts is, is my life's work, it's what I do. And it's, it's crazy how, how life works, but it's through. I met um, Richard Ryan. Now Richard is a genius, the man is amazing. You, you might not know his name, but you'll know some of his work. He taught Brad Pitt for Troy, so all the fights in Troy were his work. Fantastic work, and I was very fortunate to be introduced to him when he came out to California to do an interview for Vikings for the History Channel. He said, I'll give you a shot. You know, sometimes I'll find myself, you know, at work, and uh, I'll literally pinch myself because I'll look at where I was and the struggles, and I'll look at where you know, life was, and then I would go, God, how did I get here? You know, and when I really think about it and break it down, it, it's simply a case of I never stopped believing in myself. You know, I had a goal, I had a vision, I had a dream, and I just kept moving forward. When you find what it is that lights your soul on fire, you gotta do it. You know, like that, the thing that, that, that really strikes me is, is, is like I want to be on my on my deathbed, and I, I want to know that um, you know I've, I've, done, I've done everything I possibly can to to fulfil my life and my dreams, but also show my kids to to be brave, to to aspire, to to take chances, to to believe in yourself, and to to love things wholeheartedly and face the fears, you know, life, life's a fight. And chin down, hands up, keep moving forward. You, you, you gotta fight for whatever it is you want. And we all struggle, you know, nobody in this Facebook world where everybody puts their, their, their highlight reel of their life is on Facebook. And everybody thinks everybody else's life's perfect. It's all bullshit. Everybody struggles. Everybody has pain. Everybody has depression in some way, shape or form. You know, everyone gets hurt, everyone gets let down. And everyone, if they're lucky, they get helped. You know, they find the people that bring the light into their life. I mean, you know, I recently got married in February, almost six months ago, and, and my wife, you know, she's amazing. She believes in me. And she, she supports me. She completely enables me to continue to do what I do because she's got my back. You know, and that's something that I never thought I would have. You learn. You know, you learn and you, and you realise that life's not always going to work out the way you want it. But what's important is what do you do with that lesson? Do you, do you let it crush you? Even temporarily, you know, you, you don't know how strong you can be until you, you find yourself on your knees and you're asking yourself, am I still heading in the right direction here? Am I still doing what I need to do? Am I crazy? Well, lots of people thought I've been crazy in the past. They've told me in my face, family, friends, you know, so-called friends. Don't be afraid to fail. A lot of people say it, but it's true. I'm nothing special. I'm just a regular guy who came from a foreign country, came from Scotland came here, found something for myself and, and went after it and failed a lot. Crashed and burned a lot, made a lot of mistakes. But I knew it would be okay. As a human being on this planet, as far as I know we've got one life and you, you can't be scared to just find out what it is you want to do. And no matter how hard it gets, keep going. Because I think the worst thing would be just regret moving forward I just want to keep keep working keep helping people learning from other people and, and you know provide for my family and if I can do that then I think on my deathbed I'll be a happy man <laughs>